Senator Moran has submitted a bill to protect your data. Unfortunately, that won't protect it from the most dangerous actors of all, governments. So we'll discuss that next on The Constitution Study. There's one thing you have to know wherever you make your stand. Came from a long through line of everyday Americans. Hello there, everyday Americans. Paul Engel here with The Constitution Study, where once again we read and study the Constitution and we teach the rising generation to be free. I am glad you could join me as always. Please head to that website, constitutionstudy.com. That's where you'll find everything related to the Constitution Study. You can get my new book. It launches today, May 4th. That's right. The Constitution Study is finally available. You can get it on amazon.com in Kindle or paperback, or you can order it from my website, constitutionstudy.com slash book. It helps support the work that we're doing here at the Constitution Study to put out these videos, to write these articles, to educate people whenever possible. So if you're interested, please go buy a book, it does help. You can also sign up for the newsletter. You can get announcements uh, on the newsletter of major events that are happening at the Constitution Day, like when I released the book. Some of the first people to find out were those on the newsletter. So head over there, follow the newsletter. You know, so head over there, click the button for newsletter. You can even have these articles and videos delivered directly to your inbox as soon as they are released. It's a very nice system to keep track of everything that's going on here. It's also where you can ask questions, comment, everything is done through that website. So with that, let's talk about Mr. Moran's bill to protect your privacy. Most Americans value their privacy. So when Senator Moran, Republican out of Kansas, submitted S-3456, the Consumer Data Privacy and Security Act of 2020, I'm sure many people cheered. For my part, I find two very important and serious issues with this bill, which I want to discuss. First is authorization for the legislation itself. Now, as with any bill submitted, we should check to see that the Constitution actually authorizes Congress to do what the proposed legislation calls for. Now, when it comes to S-3456, it claims it's to, quote, protect the privacy of consumers. Now, I like privacy as much, if not more, than the next guy. Just ask my friends and business associates. I refuse to store confidential data in the cloud because of privacy concerns. There are several online services that would certainly make my life easier, but I will not use them because of privacy concerns. The question as related to S-3456 is, does the Constitution give Congress the authority to regulate the relationship between private businesses and their customers? Now, the only thing I could find was the Commerce Clause, but if we look at the clause, we should find something interesting. Quote, to regulate commerce with foreign nations and among the several states and with Indian tribes. Congress is only authorized to regulate commerce with foreign nations between the states and with Indian tribes. Now, a search of the bill showed nothing about regulating commerce with foreign nations, only coordinating with whatever similar agencies they may have. There was also no mention of interstate commerce or Indian tribes in the bill. So the answer is no. Congress has no delegated authority to interfere with the lawful relationship between a business and their customer. So who's going to protect our privacy? We should. Every company puts out a privacy policy, which is available to all their current and prospective customers. It is then up to the consumer, you and me, to determine if the value derived from doing business with them is greater than any loss of privacy that we would incur. Does that mean you might have to decide between using Google search engine and your privacy? Yes, in fact, you already do. Would you have to decide that the convenience of buying stuff on Amazon was worth letting them share your data? Absolutely. Might you have to give up the convenience of asking Alexa or Siri to turn on your lights to keep them from listening to every word you speak? Well, to be blunt, making such decisions is part of being an adult. In fact, we do it today. And if enough people decide that their privacy is worth more than the services these companies are providing, then they'll change their policies. But what if a company violates its privacy policy? Well, that's what courts are for. And while these companies employ lots of attorneys, I'm sure a few industrious legal firms could make a good living winning cases against them. 
Now, from here, I should ask why the federal government can determine how much damage was done to you by a breach of said contract, the contract being the privacy policy. Well, reading from S3456, Section 9, Paragraph A3B1, quote, Except as provided in Clause 2, the amount of civil penalty described in subparagraph A shall be the number of individuals affected by a violation described in the sub that subparagraph multiplied by an amount not to exceed $42,530. That's your limit, $42,530. Oh, what if the data cost you a $100,000 a year job? Too bad. What if the data that was compromised led directly to someone stealing your entire life savings? So sad. What if you cannot get insurance now because of the data that was compromised? And what is the value of spending the rest of your life having to explain some incorrect or out of context data that now lives forever on the internet? See, unfortunately, it gets even worse. Part of the consideration for the size of the civil penalty is the size of the entity that exposed your data. Paragraph three, the size, complexity, and resources of the covered entity or service provider, including if it is a small business. Now ask yourself, is the damage to you any less because the entity that leaked your data is a small business? Or should you receive greater compensation just because a company that did wrong happens to be a large one? This language has nothing to do with attempting to get justice for the victim. It is a limited liability clause for businesses that violate their privacy contracts with their customers. Or in other words, it's not for protecting the privacy of the consumer. To be blunt, I am not nearly as worried about private companies respecting my privacy as I am about governments. Let's face it, until Congress got its greedy fingers into this mix, I had a legitimate method to redress any grievance with a private company or individual. However, history has shown that when governments are involved, well, the courts are weighted in the government's favor. All you have to do is see how many arguments about privacy in the Fourth Amendment revolve around, quote, a government's compelling interest. The courts have even established euphemistic tests for whether they think the government's need is sufficient to overturn the Constitution and infringe on your rights. More often than not, the courts side with the government. After all, the courts are part of one of those governments. Now, the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution reads, quote, the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated, and no warrant shall issue but upon probable cause, supported by oath or affirmation, and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. There is nothing, I repeat, nothing in the Fourth Amendment about the right of the people to be secure except if there's a compelling governmental interest. I argue that the Declaration of Independence describes the only true compelling governmental interest, that of protecting your rights. The Declaration of Independence re reads, to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. The Fourth Amendment does not make allowances for what those in government desire. The only standards are reasonableness and probable cause. Now, according to Webster's 1828 Dictionary, reasonable is an adjective, conformable or agreeable to reason, just rational. Put another way is reasonable is what a reasonable person would find reasonable, just, and rational. Not what a court can find reasonable, not what a government agent finds reasonable. But what a reasonable person, you and me, what we would find reasonable. For any search to be legal, the reasonable people of the United States must find it reasonable, which is one of the reasons why the right to trial by jury is protected as well. Back to Webster's 1828 Dictionary, probable, likely, having more evidence than the contrary, or evidence which inclines the mind to belief but leaves some room for doubt. So for a court to issue a warrant, there must be more evidence for than against the government's cause being true. There must be evidence which inclines someone to believe the government's position is true. 
Yet today, governments of all sizes in America are searching and seizing data without reasonable or probable cause, and they do so simply because, well, they may want that data in the future. Which scares you more, Google, Amazon, or Apple sharing your data with private entities, or with state, local, and federal governments doing so? Are you more worried about some marketer or analyst company getting their hands on your data, or the FBI, IRS, or EPA, or some other three-letter agency? When Google, Amazon, or Apple violate their privacy policies, well, you can take them to court. But when it's your state or federal government, where do you go for that impartial redress? See, if you go to court, they most likely work for the very same governments which you have the grievance. If we want companies to keep our data private, then we should be able to sue them without the federal government getting in the way. At first, it may not make much of a difference, but if enough people sue or just abandon these companies who deal falsely with their data, they have every reason to change. However, what incentive is there for governments to change their ways? Rather than taking a bad situation and making it worse, maybe Mr. Rand should focus on cleaning up his own house. A good place to start would be to amend the Fourth Amendment to account for modern versions of papers and effects. I propose the following. The right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, documents, papers, and effects, including data and records created by them or about them against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated. See, all I'm really doing is recognizing that papers are more than just sheets of pulp, but it's the documents we create. It's the data that we create. And our effects is more than just our stuff, but it's data about us. Now, while government will pat itself on the back saying, look at all we're doing to protect your privacy, they're like a magician showing you in the one hand, look at all the good stuff we're doing, protecting your privacy from this bad, evil Google, Apple, and Amazon, while on the other hand, they're stealing your data via Google, Apple, and Amazon. It is not, you know, it, it's not that Apple and Google and Amazon are never doing bad things. The problem is what government does is so much worse, and we are supposed to be protected by that by the Constitution, but it doesn't work unless you and I stand up and say, enough. If you will not protect our rights, you're fired. We'll find somebody who will. So think about that the next time you worry about the, uh, the, the Alexa in your office or the Siri on your iPhone. The next time you search Google and get these weird ads popping up and you wonder where that data came from, well, that's a concern. But remember that everything you do, every call you make on your cell phone, every place you go on your cell phone, every Google search, every Amazon search, every Apple thing, all of these companies are taking that data and handing it over to the government whenever the government merely asks for it. And that's wrong. But they have absolutely no incentive not to because the government's just going to sue for it anyway in a court that's controlled by the government. It's time for you and me to take control of our data, tell Amazon and Apple and Google, no. And better yet, let's tell Mr. Moran and the rest of his cronies in the federal government, no, before you start worrying about what other people are doing, clean up your own house. Maybe then we can once again be the land of the free. If not, then worrying about what Google's doing with your data while the federal government is ripping it off, well, that's sitting in the Titanic and worrying about bailing it. So I hope you found that interesting. I hope you found it informative. I hope you found it useful enough to come back so I can see you the next time on The Constitution Study. There's one thing you have to know wherever you make your stand. Came from a long through line of everyday